can't get any words Podcast on blast, giving you the real talk No holding that on Can't get any worse, we'll make you see It's always a silver lining We'll set you free, so join the movement Let's change the game with the can't get any worse Podcast What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the Can't Get Any Worse Podcast just got a notification on the phone. I just texted my lovely wife, Nikita. I said, hey, I'm going to be recording for the next hour or so. So if you need me, if it's an emergency, give me a buzz. And uh, let me really, let me read her reply to you guys. Uh, okay, don't say anything mean about me this week. So uh, let's quickly go through our list up here. What do we got? Uh, no, no, she's... Uh, She's missed out this week. She hasn't said anything silly or got, a, got herself in any debacles that I've made note of anyway. So how are we all this week? We all good? We're ripping into a Tuesday. Hopefully your weekend and your Monday was fucking sick. It was a jam-packed week, uh, weekend of fights, which we'll get to in our little sporting segment. But uh, yeah, I, I've spent the morning fucking measuring cabinetry. You'd never guess it, would you? But James... You said you fucking, you closed the doors to the business. You were done. Why are you out there measuring cabinetry in the real, real world? Uh, there's, a, there's a couple of little jobs that have reared their head and they're like, hey, reckon you could get this done by Christmas? And therefore, like, repeat customers, like people that I know won't be a fuck around, if that makes sense. So I'm like, sure, let's fucking get it done. Let's, let's boost the bank hidden, heading into Christmas time. Holy shit, he's almost dropped a coaster. It is chaotic, but uh, yeah, so my head, let's let's hope I can flick that switch from cabinet making to podcasting and give you guys a fucking ripping episode. What do you reckon? Oh, first drink break, done. Check that off your bingo cards. But um, had a bit of a, had a bit of a scare factor on the way to site this morning. So I was about, I don't know, 10 minutes away from this person's house and I was busting for a piss the entire drive and I noticed on my maps there was a little public toilet coming up so I'm like okay sweet let's do it let's pull in we got some time I pull in I go to shut the toilet door right and I don't know if you guys have ever encountered this but as I've shut the door like as I've shut the toilet door I've made a little mental note to myself and I'm like oh that's a bit tight like it was at the point where the door wouldn't go past the door jam unless you physically slammed it shut, if that makes sense, like push it shut. And as I've turned the lock, I've gone, oh, shit, I hope I am not locked in this public toilet because that would be awkward as shit. A, I'd have to call the client and be like, oh, uh, flat tire. I don't know, make up some fucking bullshit, you know what I mean? I'd have to get on my Instagram stories and post to you guys, hey, podcast is going to be late this week. You'll never guess I'm locked in a public toilet. Hashtag can't get any worse. Uh, but I've done my business. I, I just pissed. Doing my business sounds like I, I took a dirty shit in there, but I have urinated in the public toilet and I've washed my hands. I've gone to the door and <laughs> I've unlocked it and I've gone to go out and I'm like, holy shit, the door's not opening. All my fucking greatest fears are happening at once right now. What am I going to do? So I I give the door another little attempt. It's not budging. It feels jammed shut. And I've gone, all right, what are we going to do here? So I've, I've, I've pull, pulled my hands off the door. I've gone, you need to stop and think about this. You need to come up with a solution. I'm Mission Impossible 7 in my head. I've never seen any of the Mission Impossible movies, but I would imagine... It goes along the lines of he finds himself in a bit of a pickle and he has to brainstorm ways to get out of it. So if I'm wrong, write in and tell me that's not the plot of Mission Impossible or next time Ash and Adrian are on, we can fucking talk about it for 40 minutes like we always do about movies that I don't watch. Anyway, back to the public toilet. I stand back and I'm like, what the fuck am I going to do? And as I've stood back and I've assessed the situation... Guess what we've got here, ladies and gentlemen? We've just got a classic case of James is a fucking retard. Uh, that's right. That's right. We all fucking guessed it, didn't we? So I'm going to pause for three seconds while you guys quickly have a think about what you thought I might have been doing in this public toilet. Ready? One, two, three. 
All right. If you guessed James was pushing the door instead of pulling it, you would be correct. What a fucking idiot. How stupid can you actually be? I've just pulled, the, got the handle, given it a pull towards me instead of pushing outwards like I was trying to do, and I'm free. I'm free from this chaotic situation that I may have found myself in. So uh, that's been my Monday morning. Just that That is probably... If we had to sit down and make a list of the most scariest public toilet encounters we could have, I reckon that would be maybe number four. Maybe number four. And you guys can stop and fill in those first three. Uh, here's a clue for you guys. The first two include dick. Uh, so that would be... That's for me personally. That could be on your guys' list of best things to do in a public toilet. But anywho, let's rip into what else we've been happening this week. I don't have... It's been, a, it's been a quiet week. I will preface these next stories with that. There has not been a great deal going on. Life has been, we've got, we're in that funny patch of the year. I don't know if you guys are going through this as well, but uh, obviously now I've got my day job, which chews up a large portion of my day. I am doing these last few fucking private jobs for the business that just seem to keep rearing their head. Every time I think I'm, I'm out of it, another one pops up, which, look, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's it's money. That that's that's all I'm looking at it as. It's extra money that we probably realistically need, to be honest. And I'm doing my part. Let's do that. So we've got that. Then we've got comedy. Then we've got podcasting. Then we've got these other little things that I'm trying to pursue that I haven't really filled you guys in yet. But oh boy, when I do, uh, that is all like I think pretty much the hard part is done now. Uh, and now we're, we're on the back end, starting to get things to actually make this stuff achievable. So stay tuned for that because that's exciting as shit. But anyway, uh, so everything's just happening. Everything's happening. I'm not doing as much comedy. I don't know if you guys have noticed that when I tell you guys where I'm gigging and stuff at the end of the episodes. You like For most of the year, I've been doing, I don't know, three gigs a week. Which is, it seems to be my happy spot. If I can do three gigs a week, I'm stoked. But at the moment, it's sort of one gig here, then the next week might be two. But very rarely am I hitting that three gig mark at the moment. And I think if I was doing three gigs, I'd just fucking have a panic attack. My brain would not cope with it at the moment. So uh, all in all, everything is somewhat playing out. Let's Let's just go that, right? But... In short, that's why fucking I don't have a great deal going on this week. But let's have a little sip and get into my story time. Story times with James. It's a cool little, uh, cool little sound effect. Maybe we'll we'll bring that in. So something that is something that I'm. That's one of the things I'm working in the background. So fingers crossed, we're going to play out the rest of the year as we are with the podcast, and then. Probably in the new year, like January, just going up that that next little rung, uh, leveling up one more time. So nothing crazy, no, I'm not reconfiguring the set again or anything like that. But again, just a couple of little little ideas and a little couple of little changes that I want to make. That I don't know. All in all, I haven't had time, or I've just been too fucking lazy. Like this whole laptop table that I've been teasing since I moved the couch over here. When are you going to do that, dickhead? Um, but yeah, stay tuned for that as well. Let's rip in. For my day job, right? We got a call the other week and they go, can you quote this job for us? And I, be, I bring the plans up and I'm like, oh my God. Boys, we've landed the fucking jackpot. If you're a tradie, where do you think... Let's play another game. Where do you think the best location of being able to do... Actually, we've got two fucking jobs coming up that are that are crazy locations. One is, this isn't the one that I'm about to talk about, but one is on the Whit Sundays. So I don't, who's going to put their hand up to go and do that? I, I don't know who we're going to send up to measure that job. I don't know if there's someone that might want to go to the, and all expenses paid to the Whit Sundays. Um, I don't know. I, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll go. You guys stay here. I'll go to the Whit Sundays and I'll spend 30 minutes measuring some cabinetry. And then I don't know what I'll do with the rest of my day. Um, I don't know. Maybe maybe get trapped in a public toilet. Who knows? Anyway, second best location. Let's go with that. 
if you guys guessed brewery, uh, you would be correct. So we have a like small little kitchen to do it, a big brewery close to me. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna name any names or give anyone some free sponsorship, you know what I mean? Um but I had to go measure that the other day. And before I left, oh, the banter. The banter flying around the shed. Oh, how lucky is James? He gets to, he's going to spend all day going to the brewery and just drink and piss all day. He's probably going to find the big vat of beer and just go swimming in it. James is going to have the best day ever. So I go to this location. And uh, first of all, if there's one thing I hate about the construction in- industry, <laughs> this, this is a stupid thing to say, but uh, there's, look, there's a level of safety that I'm happy with. That Yes, we need to be safe while we're at work, right? So when we're doing things, we need to wear the appropriate PPE. We need to do certain things to keep ourselves safe, to get ourselves home to the family. But in certain cases, such as this time, um, I, I fucking hate wearing a hard hat, right? I had to rock a hard hat. All right, I can suck it up and do that. Now, the next one... They have a strict policy that on this premises, you cannot walk anywhere that is not in like a one meter drawn out yellow line. Like that's that's the walkway through the whole premises. If you are seen off that, you get kicked off site. And I've gone, as I'm doing the induction, I'm like, okay, makes sense. Sure. Let's go nuts. Now, I leave the office and I enter a giant concrete pad perhaps the size of a football field if we had to give an example now i'm in the let's say the bottom the bottom left hand side of the football field and i have to get to the top right hand side so what do you do oh you'd just walk in a straight line no incorrect stupid fucking answer you have to follow the yellow outlined path all the way around the external perimeter of the football field just to get to the spot you need to go so uh that was that was irritation number one. Now, the fun part. I've done all the I've done all the hard lifting. Now it's the fun part that everyone has been teasing me about. I'm about to go in here, and it's going to be like entering Willy Wonka's chocolate factory for the first time. But it's all just beer. Uh, so I push the push the cool room doors open, right? And as I enter, holy fuck! I am just hit with the most disgusting smell you have ever seen, and it was. It was the obvious smell of beer, but it was the beer smell of like, I don't know, a thousand beers just being poured into like a carpet or something. And then that carpet sitting out in the sun for six months. And then you bring that back inside and now that's what your house smells like. Um, It was just this disgusting, yeasty, fucking gross smell. And it just made me not want to drink beer for the next hour. Uh so, yeah, to, to say I, I pulled into the local pub on the way back and smashed some beers before I went back would be a lie. <laughs> Just joking. I have not drank at work since the truck incident. Um, uh, mm, uh, actually, that's incorrect. Friday beers were a big thing for a while there. But anywho, I have not drank and drove a work vehicle for a very long time. Let's say that. Ugh. But, yeah. Just all your fucking dreams crumbling before your eyes when you think you're about to go and go and uh, have a great time and you just let down, you know what I mean? I fucking... I recorded something in here yesterday, which again, we'll get to when we get to the sports section, but I fucked around with some chords and stuff and I recorded it on my like handheld mic just for something different, just to try out a couple of things in here. And now I... I uh, fucked with my chord organisation before I started recording and a little bit concerned, you know what I mean? So hopefully you guys are hearing this. Anyway, what else has happened this week? Uh, Weston had his final big, he goes to like a, I don't don't think it's technically a private school, but it's like a religious school. I don't know. I, I don't know the tiers of schooling these days. Like back in my day, you just went to a state school or a private school and that was it. As far as I was like, as far as I knew, anyway. But uh, yeah, Westy goes to a, a let's just call it a private school for the sake of the story. He had his final chapel or whatever it's called on Friday, 
So Nikita's like, oh, can you leave work for an hour and come? And I'm like, sure. Uh, don't want to miss it. If I can get to anything the kids are doing, then I'm there. And I rock up there, bang on time. The thing kicks off and Weston's segment is the very first one. And I'm like, oh, sweet. I can uh, watch this and then go. So he gets up there. He sings his like religious song. And wait, I should say the rest of his class sang the religious song. And he did what I used to do during these periods and just mouth the words and do minimal hand movements that you can. Uh, just enough to not get in trouble. And you can be like, oh, I'm trying my best. Um, but anyway, I go, all right, I'm going to go. But Parker was there and he's just latched onto me. He's like, nah, you're not going anywhere. So I've had to sit there and watch the rest of it. Now, in between playing around with Parker and having as much fun as you can in a church with a three-year-old, uh, <laughs> unless you're a priest, am I right? Uh, bang, a, a little dig at the Catholic church. Um, sorry, it was low-hanging fruit and it just popped into my head. Anyway, P's sitting on my lap and stuff. He starts, I'm sitting next to a, an elderly woman, right? And he starts kicking her leg and I'm like, like not, he, he's not going out of his way just to kick this chick in the leg. He's just like swinging his legs and it's brushing her leg. And I noticed probably later than I should have. And I've gone, oh my God, I'm so sorry. And she goes, that's fine. It's probably really boring in here for him. And I'm like, thank you. Thank you, elderly woman. Most elderly women would be like, this is the house of the Lord. You do not fucking have fun in here. This is all about strict religious learnings. Um, Learnings wasn't the word I was searching for there, but it's going to do for now. Anyway, we move past that and I'm sitting there fairly bored. Let's say that, right? And now P's focused. So I'm looking around and I don't know. I think I've said this when I have been to like comedian shows or even musical act shows and shit. I'll zone out for a period of time and I'll just start looking at like the speakers in the room and the lighting and stuff and be like, oh, this would be a cool place for a show. Uh, not that I'm going to do comedy in a church or anything, but um, I'm just looking at what they've got. You know what I mean? Getting some ideas. Oh, that'd be cool lighting. And then I've looked, I'm assessing the room and I spot something directly in front of me. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on there? It, it took me off, like took me off guard. Is that the word? And I'm like, that is so weird. And I found it Oddly disrespectful, uh, and I don't know why. And I'll tell you guys, you guys tell me if you find this weird or whatever, but I think it's just a – this is where I'm at in my life. I'm at that period in my life where I'm like middle-aged or whatever. So the the things that old people are doing, I'm like, oh, that's so lame. And the things young people are doing, I'm like, oh, that's so lame as well. And like, I don't know, I don't know how to adjust to all new things and stuff like that. So as I was growing up, we were in a, a pretty religious family, if you want to say that right. And uh, we used to have to go to church just on Christmas and Easter because that's the only time that God is watching that you go to church. Um, so as long as you go th those days, he'll be like, sweet, come on in, guys. You guys have done the hard work. Um, so these days, these days I'm not overly religious. Let's let's put it that way, right? There's a, there's a glimmer, like I've put... I've left the building, but as I've left, I've put like a paint tin in the door, right? Like I've just left it ajar with the option of going back if I need to. So every now and then, like if, if something bad's happening, I'll just give, I'll just do a quick, uh, hey, bud, do you reckon you could help us out here? And sure enough, here he comes. He goes, look, you've cracked the code. He goes, all these guys, they still go to church and stuff every week. But um, I I've moved on. I'm pretty cool. I actually... I tried to write a joke about this way back and then everyone's like, oh, you don't joke about religion or politics or whatever. And obviously people that are good at it can get away with it. But um, yeah, my joke was somewhat like uh, still living, like people still living their life on the rules that a guy made, uh, however old fucking Jesus is. I don't know. I haven't kept up with all that. But um, like... And then the joke would somewhat be like uh, Jesus coming back now and being like, oh, fuck, like I didn't know rim jobs are a thing now. Like, like he <laughs> that's so fucking lame. But um, just thinking like how much I've changed in 32 years and then just making this guy stick to what he thought 
thousands of years ago and being like, no, nah, that's what he thought then. That's what we've got to live by and just not letting him find new things in life. Um, so, yeah, I found that pretty funny. Maybe I'll go back to it one day. Who fucking knows? Anyway, back to it. So in my, in my religious days when I was in churches and stuff, every church has got a, a sculpture or a uh, like a fucking, let's just use that word, a sculpture of Jesus on a cross, right? It's a common thing that you'll see in a church. Now, in my time in the church, it was always a wooden Jesus on a cross. Uh, the the higher end churches that you'd go to sometimes had like a, a a oh hang on my dog's barking at something. She seems to have gone quiet. We're all good. Uh, the expensive churches that have like a cast bronze or gold statue um, stat. Is statue the word I was using before? Statue was the word I was looking for, but anyway. Um, now, I've looked into the center of the church and I've seen a neon Jesus. That's right, a neon outline of Jesus. Now, I've, I feel deep down like the, the wooden statue or the, the, uh, the gold statue or something, that feels, that feels like you've spent some money or something on getting Jesus in the church. Like you want him to be front and center. You want it to be the focal point of the church. And as I've looked and seen just a neon sign of Jesus, I'm like, <laughs> A, it feels cheap. And B, it feels just disrespectful that you haven't even given him a face. You've just given him an, a thin blue outline on a thin blue cross. And it's like, what the fuck? And then, so I've sat there and I've had a conversation with myself as to, whether or not this is disrespectful or whether this is just the new age of seeing Jesus. Like, is Jesus at raves now? Is this the Jesus I've been searching for my whole life? This cool new Jesus. It's like, yeah, come on, guys. Ecstasy is pretty cool as long as you follow the word of the Lord. Um, so I don't know. I don't know what's going on in the church these days. I don't know what's going on outside that door. My dog is barking. I'm going to have two seconds of silence to see if she's still barking. No, nah, we seem to be good. We seem to be in the clear. Anywho, let's move on. My week in comedy. Where are we sitting at? To be fair, I dragged that out for a lot longer than I thought I was going to. So hopefully it was entertaining for you guys. Uh, week in comedy, it has been a crazy week. So this is where, this is where we're going to let loose, ladies and gentlemen. This is where we go nuts. Ugh. Wednesday night. Had a gig at Good Chat Comedy Club up in the city. Uh, top, it would be in my top three places to perform for sure. Uh, love that place. So I get up there. No, wait, before this, I don't know if anyone lives in my sort of area in Logan between Brisbane and Gold Coast, but we had a crazy storm on Wednesday night, like insane to the point where I was getting ready to leave and Nikita was like, are you actually going out in this for an unpaid comedy gig. And I'm like, babe, this is what you have to do. This, I could go there. The CEO of Netflix could be in Brisbane tonight. He could go, oh, my God, I want that dude with the dick and cum jokes on Netflix tomorrow. We need to sign him up. We need to get him on a development deal. We need to wrap him up. So I've left. I'm about five minutes into my drive and I've gone, is this fucking worth it? I, It was potentially the heaviest rain I've ever driven in. And I've driven in some crazy rain. I'm not scared of driving in the rain or anything, right? The amount of times that I've driven to or from my cabinet making job in torrential rain and just gone, this this is it. You can't call in sick. You've just got to get there. So I'm like, well, I'm going to treat comedy the same. If I have to drive to this gig in this, so be it. So I push through. I'm on the M1 doing like 40 Ks an hour because it is bucketing down uh i could not see like the rain was so heavy you couldn't even see the white lines on the highway so the rest of me and my fellow traffic drivers were just we were, we had an an unwritten rule an unwritten agreement to each other we were just looking every now and then going oh okay you're staying there i'll i'll follow this path i will stay and i'll stay straight here you stay there um i'm surprised i made it to be honest anyway i'm 10 minutes away from the gig. I'm like, this is fucking shit. Why did I waste my time driving in here? Nobody in the world is going to come out in this horrendous weather and just watch some comedy. 
and I've parked, walked down to Good Chat Comedy, opened the door to a fucking packed room and I've gone, what is going on here? Why is this so crazy tonight? And as I've stepped in the room, I start seeing cameras everywhere. There's boom mics. Like the place is kitted out, ready to record something. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Like, what did I miss? Because I'd seen the, like they emailed us the lineup and all that, told us our set times. And I didn't notice anything out of the ordinary there. So I'm, I was expecting a normal night. So I've walked in, I've seen all this. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Walk into the green room, see my favorite Australian comedian in the room and shelled up and decided I'm going to be the weird guy that sits in the corner by himself all night tonight. Uh, I'm not going to talk to anyone. I'm not going to make eye contact. A couple of times I walked past him and he's gone, hey, mate, how are you? And I've gone, oh, my God, this is the best night of my life. But, uh, yeah, Damien Power is the bloke that I'm talking about. If you haven't seen any of his gear, I think most of his specials are up on YouTube for free. So go check him out. Easily the best Australian comedian uh, there is. So he turns out he was there during the day. He's filming – He's making a TV show or a movie or something at the moment. So he filmed a portion of it during the day, but then they needed a couple of extra shots or something. So he lined up with Good Chat. He's like, can I jump up right before the break and um, and get what we need sort of thing, if that makes sense. So turns out that most of the people there watching were there for that reason. Like they were extras for the movie or whatever. And I've like I'm sitting there, I'm like, I need to fucking crush in front of Damien Power. So this this is a fun little fact. My first big gig ever, and it was the the third gig I did before I took that like eight month break or whatever, and then restarted back in November, uh, was at Good Chat Comedy Club, and it was their open mic night sort of thing they do. And they go, oh, we're going to pause the open mic night. We've got a big big comedian who wants to come in and uh, try a couple of new jokes and things like that. And it was Damien Power. He just strolls in, all new material and stuff, just off off the cuff and annihilating the room. And I'm like, fuck, like that is next level. Um, so then to be in good chat again with this bloke here, and obviously he fucking has no idea who I am, but in my head I'm like, oh, this is the moment. He's going to go, wait a minute. Didn't I see you about three years ago and you fucking ate a bag of dicks in front of this room? Um you know what? Come with me. You're coming on my next tour, uh, which wasn't going to happen, but fucking a boy can dream. You know what I mean? So he gets up, does his thing, and basically comes and says goodbye during the break and all his camera crew and stuff start packing up the gear and I'm like, fuck, he's, he's not going to stay and watch my set. I was second last. I should have said that at the start. I was second last. So I was keen to do my set and get the fuck out of there, get home out of the the storm that was coming, uh, if it was going to get any worse. But yeah, I was second last. So I'm sitting there pushing through the show. One by one, the comedians start leaving after their sets. And the, there was a bloke. Now, this is where things get interesting, right? So we've, we're on a high. We're, we're in a comedy club with your favorite comedian. Uh, things can't get any better, right? Now, there's a bloke at the back of the room for most of the night has been, look, I wouldn't say, I suppose, I suppose you would say heckling. He's just yelling out little things here and there or just mumbling under his breath to the point where the comedians would be like, oh, what was that, mate? And then it would just, it would end up in nothing, right? So it, it's, it's a constant flow through the night of him interrupting the show. Now, finally get, comes to my time on the stage and I'm like, okay, sweet. Let's get up and crush. The, the mood of the night was a little, it was a little off just because all those people, well, not all the people, but a fair chunk of them were extras and stuff for the movie. So it wasn't the perfect comedy crowd, but they were still there for a laugh. So by the end of the night, they were cracked. They were ready just for some fun. And I get up, I get halfway through my first joke, this bloke up the back just stomps on the punchline. And I'm like, obviously I've built the tension in the story before the punchline. And then I've, 
he said something and I've just gone, oh, who's this guy or something like that. Just played it off. And then I've got to the punchline. Didn't quite land as hard as it would if he just let me flow. You know what I mean? And I've played it off. I've entered my second joke. Same deal. Just starts yelling out. And I've gone, oh, great. This guy has reached peak drunkness right as I've stepped on stage. This is going to be fun. So I've gone, all right, this is basically a nothing set. I'm just going to have to push through my material. And then when he interrupts, it's just going to be a bit of back back and forth. Work on my crowd work, which as I've said uh, in previous episodes, I'm not a crowd work comedian, but I'm trying to sharpen that tool, if that makes sense. So get halfway through the second joke, same deal. He yells out and I've gone, oh, who bought my dad tonight? He'd fucking, he's interrupting my set because I'm funnier than him. Just lame shit like that. Just trying to play it off. And then I get back in my joke. And then the third joke, he yells something out about, um, that's right. He lets me get all the way through my third joke, but then right before the punchline, he yells out um, something about, I don't know, some lame, pretend you've got a joke, right? And pretend that my punchlines are never super clever or anything. They just always end in a dick joke, but pretend my punchline is not where you think it's going and that's why it's funny. So he yells out the punchline that the general punter would think that the punchline's going to be, if that makes sense. So it's just, he ends it with like some sort of lame dad joke or something. And I've gone, all right, I'm going to go back and forth with this bloke for a little bit. So I've spent maybe, I don't know, 30, no, not even that, like 20 seconds, just giving this guy some light roasting. Um, I was like, oh, who bought my Ghost Rider tonight? Just, again, nothing crazy. I didn't go, you're a fucking piece of shit. Like, fuck you, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, (laughs) this guy loses it. He jumps up out of his seat and he just starts yelling at me and stuff. And I'm like, what the fuck? So then the dude who runs the comedy club has gone over to this bloke all while I'm on stage. And he's gone, oh, mate, you've had a bit too much to drink. You're going to have to leave. This bloke starts like getting a bit pushy and shovey. And I'm like, oh, now, I've never had to do this before, right? But on the fly, I've gone, okay, it's, I can either stand here in silence and it'd be super fucking awkward and uncomfortable, uncomfortable for everyone, or I can just add some comedic, uh, comedic, uh, what's the fucking word? Like overlay or subtitles or, I don't know. I can talk through what's happening, but make it funny. So I've started doing that. And I don't know in in reflection if that was the right thing to do, but in the moment, I feel like it was the right thing to do because it was it was making everyone else in the room feel comfortable. They were giggling, they were all attention was on me because I was still talking. so they weren't watching what was going on. They finally get this guy outside the door. He picks up a glass and throws it at the bloke that runs good chat. I'm not going to use any names or anything for the purpose of the the conversation. Um, So he throws this glass. It misses him luckily and just shatters all over the floor. And this guy is just, he's outside the door now, but he's still screaming and just interrupting the show. And a a heap of comedians and stuff are out there as backup and they're telling him to fuck off. And I've had to play it off again. And I'm like, there's nothing else I can do. Like I had a seven minute set. And by the time this was all up, it was probably 12 minutes or so. Um, that's how long my recording went for anyway. So um, I finished on a joke that I knew was going to get a big laugh and hopefully build the comedy back in the room for the last bloke uh, behind me. Got a big laugh. I'm like, thank you, fucking blah, blah, blah. Walk out the back. And thank God, like I was stressing that I did not do the right thing up there by making it a funny situation. But thank fuck all the comedians out the back and the dude that runs Good Chat was like, Fucking good job up there. You killed it, um, handled it so well. I'm like, fucking sorry if like I was making him angrier and they're like, nah, you 100% did the right thing. I'm like, sick. Uh, So I get through that period, right? And I pull my phone out of my pocket to stop the recording and just check if I got any messages or anything. And sure enough, I do have a message and I've gone and it's from someone uh, who doesn't, like we have a bit of back and forth here, here and there. Um, but we don't message each other regularly, if that makes sense. So I get a message from him and I'm like, what the fuck? So I open it straight away and it's a 
He goes, oh, no, what have you done? And I'm going, what the fuck? And it's an Instagram story of me on stage. Uh, this dude that got kicked out was recording the whole thing as he was being kicked out. And it's just me on stage playing it off. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Who is this guy? Like, he fucking caused a ruckus. He just got kicked out. He threw a glass at uh, undisclosed person. And he goes, yeah, just fucking watch him. He got kicked out of another comedy club last week uh, because someone was – he ruined the show so the comedian was going back at him and he pulled a knife on them. And I'm like, sick. That's fucking sick. And I'm like, oh, that's good to know. And he goes, yeah, just watch him. He's a, um, he's a pretty big like Sydney rapper, uh, pretty big on like the underground rap scene. And I'm like, fuck yeah. I've just got myself in some sort of underground rap beef – unintentionally so uh to say that i was petrified for the rest of the night i'm basically brisbane's biggie smalls let's just put it out there uh but yeah i've i've power walked to my car watching my shot like looking over my shoulder the whole time scary fucking shit but um yeah i got a call from another brisbane comedian the following day and he's like look uh i've been dealing with this bloke i'll have a chat to him and make sure that everything's sweet blah 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 so I think, I think I've worked my way out of that. So fingers crossed. But um, yeah, I'm not. Don't message me and go, who was it? Blah blah blah. Because I'm not going to fucking tell you because I don't want anything else popping off. Um, so yeah, pretty pretty insane. And it, <laughs> if anything, it has made me not want to talk to the crowd at all. Uh, because you don't know who you're going to fucking talk to. But which is a shitty feeling to have when you're trying to venture into this whole comedy thing. But um. Yeah, is what it is. It was a it was an adventurous night, let's say that. But uh, last night we had Distillery Road, uh, our Sunday monthly show, which this lineup that was on last night, I would say on paper was our strongest lineup. Uh, so I was fucking stoked. I was ready to crush. Uh, well, not me personally, just as the promoter of the show. I wasn't on the lineup this time. Probably why it was so fucking good. Yeah. Um, so I get to the show, we start setting up and stuff, crowds funneling in. Probably probably on the lighter side of what we've seen the last couple of months um, in terms of people there. There was probably 80-ish, 70 to 80-ish. Um, if I had to throw a dart, I haven't checked with the venue yet. But um, it was just a bit of a – like normally when you get there, it seems like they're there for the comedy. It seems like they're there for laugh. Whereas last night, it felt like one of those situations where we were intruding on their, like it was a, a whole, almost every big table was full of families and friends just there to almost socialize on a Sunday afternoon. And it felt like we were intruding with the comedy. Uh, so at that point, I, I was a little bit worried. I'm like, fuck. Now, they come and tell me about five minutes before it kicks off. I've spoken about the mezzanine area at this venue, which is often sick when it's full of punters and stuff for the comedy because you can look up there, you can play to them a bit. Like it's it's a good time. Now, there's also a, a bar and shit up there. And I don't know why or how or whatever, but someone had booked their birthday party to be on the mezzanine next to this bar. And there was like, I don't know, 50 people at this party and they go look we tried to tell them they can't book it blah 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 and then they go no we want to come and have the birthday party at the comedy show like we want the birthday party to be the comedy show sort of thing if that makes sense so they're like okay if you want to but like it blah 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 and look it did not make for a great show if we want to be entirely honest uh the the noise Obviously, it's a birthday party, so everyone wants to socialise as friends that haven't seen each other for ages, as family that hasn't seen each other for ages. So they're just talking the whole time and all that noise is just travelling down and I was like, fuck. Um, so, yeah, it just – it was one thing after another last night. Hats off to all the comedians. They powered through their sets and, um, yeah, I fucking – there was, again, a few – it's good now that we've built like a, a bit of a base of – locals that come to every show now and they all came out the back again they were shaking the comedians hands and getting photos and stuff um 
And yeah, they were, they said the same thing. They're like, oh, it was a tricky show tonight. Like we could barely hear anything over the the party and all that. And I'm like, yeah, sorry about that. Um, but then they all said we'll be back next month. So uh, yeah, December 15th before I forget to plug that. That is when the next Distillery Road one is. We have a out of town a headlining that one. So probably release that a little bit closer. Uh, what have I watched this week? That's it for, for my week in comedy, if you guys didn't catch on. I'll quickly rip through this stuff. Uh, new Netflix special that I went and watched just because she went on Rogan and your mum's house, house podcast to plug it. I've never heard of her. So her name's Adrian Apolucci, I think you pronounce it. Um, and her special's called The Dark Queen. So I'm like, oh, yeah, I love dark comedy. Uh, let's see. And it didn't. Like, it didn't really draw me in. I wasn't entirely... Like, it was decent. Like, it, it was a it was a special to put on if you've got nothing to watch sort of thing. So, if you want to, go check it out. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, the other thing we watched, finally, Inside Out 2, uh, which I know, probably not hard-hitting for most of the listeners here, but I don't know. Nikita and I both said the same thing. Nikita will watch any Disney movie and be like, that's the sickest thing I've ever seen. Uh, but we both turned to each other after Inside Out 2 and went, the first one was better. Uh, but in saying that, there were moments of this movie that were sick and the storyline made sense. Um, I don't know, it might be one of those ones that we need to watch again without the kids because obviously when you watch movies with kids, they're like, can we pause it to go get popcorn or fucking can we pause it to go to the toilet? And it just... Breaks that suspense of the movie. I don't know. Um, so we might rewatch it. Uh, last thing, I was going to talk about this last week, but ran out of time. I have been getting back into a little bit of Ed Sheeran. Uh, I don't know if you guys are Ed Sheeran fans, but I was a, a big time Ed Sheeran fan, like in his early days and shit like that. And I had a question. I don't know if there is a better album as a whole as Multiply. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember that Ed Sheeran one, but it's got like six or seven big singles that he released that just blew up the world. And then he went on the like worldwide stadium tour. Um, and just like, yeah, song after song on there. Nikita and My Wedding Song's on there, which, um, yeah, it was a bit of a... We, we wanted an Ed Sheeran song and then we hadn't heard this one anywhere else and we're like oh cool let's do that so that's called Tenerife Sea for anyone that what does want to go and listen to it uh I distinctly remember after the first dance we went over and spoke to Ash and his wife and they were like and his wife said to Nikita she's like oh uh it's not a wedding until the, there's an Ed Sheeran song or something like that and then we got to the first dance and she's like oh there it is um so yeah fun fact as well we finally got tickets to see him in – it was the Multiply tour. So we were – it was after the wedding. We're like, oh, we'll go see our wedding song live, blah, blah, blah. It was at Suncorp Stadium. And this was in the peak of like – I don't know if it was the peak actually, but it was a a bad time with my like head noise and shit like that that was going on and just bad panic attacks and just not wanting to be in anywhere social or public. And yeah, we fucking – the afternoon of, I was getting ready and I was just like, I can't do this. We can't We can't go and watch it. So still kicking ourselves to this day. We're like, next time he comes back, we're 100% going to see him. Um, not that he'll play like any of those songs from back then, but – or he'll probably play a couple, let's be fair. But, um, yeah, that, that was fun. So I don't know if you guys remember that one. Let me know what you reckon. But let's rip into the fight week that was. We'll touch on the one that I le- I know less about first. Saturday rolled around and we finally got to see it. Mike Tyson versus Jake Paul. And I, look, obviously it was the big talk. It was it was every news article, 58-year-old man versus 27-year-old man. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's even going down. And I don't know, I, like everyone else, I was seeing the clips of Mike Tyson coming out of him training hitting pads like a beast, all this sort of shit. And then I was hearing the other side of the coin of, yeah, anyone can film a 30-second video of hitting pads fucking as hard as you can and then 
we don't know what happens once they stop recording. He might go and lay in bed for six days. Um, but I was like, no, fuck you guys. This is it. Mike Tyson's going to knock Jake Paul out, knock some sense into him. And oh, I don't know. It, what, it did not hit me until right before the fight when they started playing Jake Paul's highlights and it was like the last couple of years. And then they start playing Mike Tyson highlights and it was like olden day videos, like legit all grainy and pixelated and shit. And I was like, fuck, he he is a genuinely old man. And I don't know. I, it seems to be the common, the common denominator around everyone talking about the fight, but that shit was so fucking sad. Like from the end of the first round, I just wanted it to be over. I was like, this shit is... It, there was no other word than sad. Um, just watching this kid beat up an old old man. And luckily, like Jake Paul even said it in post-fight interviews and stuff. He's like, look, the punches that he was landing on me, I legit could not even feel. So I basically just danced with him to the end of the fight. He's like, there was no way that I was going to go hard and knock out an old man and then that would get me nowhere in my career. Like I've just knocked out a 58-year-old man that had no stamina after the first round. So hats off to Mike Tyson. I think like, and this even ventures into the UFC that we'll talk about, but I think Mike Tyson literally only did that fight to make money for his family. Um, Like that $20 million for one last fight, it's like sets his fucking kids and their kids up for however long they want really. Um, and, like, the new Mike Tyson, like, I know uh, a lot of people that fucking hate Mike Tyson and I understand he did some shit back in the day. But the new Mike Tyson where he does his podcast and all that and he's sort of reinvented himself through uh, mushrooms and things like that and he's just a real toned-down version of himself. Uh, I like that Mike Tyson and I think at the end of the day that's why I was rooting for him. But... I'm glad it's over. I'm glad it's done with. Uh, Jake Paul apparently wore the most expensive boxing outfit ever worn in history. Had um, 300 and ca- 380 carats of diamonds on it for for some reason. Who fucking knows? Uh, who knows where that money could have gone other than that? But hey, it's his money to throw around so he can do whatever the fuck he wants with it, right? Let's rip into the UFC. Now, let's let's touch on this. To start with, I made an outrageous video on Sunday morning and I know it is some of the stupidest shit that I might have ever said. Uh, (laughs) But hey, you've got to throw these, you've got to throw these jabs out. You've every now and then you might hit one. And I came up with this crazy thought in my head after the Mike Tyson loss, the world was angry at Jake Paul. He'd just beaten the goat of boxing, uh, the greatest of all time. Jake Paul's a piece of shit, blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, fuck, okay, what's going to happen? And I'm like, oh, how crazy would it be? UFC tomorrow, we've got two goats fighting each other again, John Jones versus Stipe Miocic. I'm like, that would be crazy if, like, obviously Mike Tyson is a, a hero of John Jones. We all knew the outcome of the main event. We'll get to it. We knew John Jones was going to win. So I was like, how crazy would this be if – Somehow that upset John Jones. He got angry about it and he does his post-fight uh, interview and he calls out Jake Paul and goes, if you want to beat up an old man, a 58-year-old old man, come and fight the real goat in me. Uh, and I was like, that would be insane just to see John Jones beat the fuck out of Jake Paul. Then I had to justify my outrageous claims by saying that it's all possible with Dana White's boxing promotion that he's starting, uh, all this sort of shit, right? I looked up their weights and their heights, which were surprisingly similar. I thought they were going to be drastically different, but when you think Jake Paul weighed in to that Mike Tyson fight at 227 pounds, I think, and John Jones fought most, of, pretty much all of his career at 205, uh, there seems to be a good little middle ground there that they could meet on. But um, yeah, I don't know. And then... <laughs> You throw an outrageous sentence like that out and Instagram and Facebook were pretty good, but the the comments I got on TikTok of just like, this is the stupidest thing I've ever heard, blah, blah, blah. But like at the end of the day, 
you've got to say crazy shit like that to get traction on social media. Like, do you want me to come on and be like, oh, John Jones is going to call out uh, fucking, he's going to beat Stipe, then he's going to, he's just going to get on the mic and be like, oh, I don't know what's next. Like, that'd be boring. Who the fuck wants to see that? So let's move on. Uh, if we had to say UFC 309 was potentially one of the most boring cards I've seen this year after after building it up last week and saying it could be one of the best, it was somewhat of a letdown until we get to it. Uh, it was just boring fight after boring fight. The Jim Miller fight was probably the only highlight on the prelims that I saw. Good on him for getting another win. I think that's... Uh, he, Got the record for the most wins in UFC. I think he increased that to 27 yesterday, which is an insane record to have um, and still be fighting. So he didn't announce a retirement or anything like that. I don't know when the fuck he's going to retire, but I personally would like to see him retire on top. If he's got one more fight, fight another grizzled vet, get the win and just put your gloves down in the center of the octagon. Um, But hey, it's his life. He can do whatever the fuck he wants to do. Uh, let's move on to the, the main three fights on the main card. Bo Nickel versus Paul Craig. I made an outrageous statement again last week. See, this is the other thing. <laughs> uh, how boring would it be if you just bet on all the favorites on the card? It'd be boring. Bo Nickel was paying $1.06. That means you'd have to put $100 on to make $6. That's stupid. Why would you fucking do that? Paul Craig was paying $8 to win. It takes one punch or one one wrong move on the ground to get submitted to for him to win. And I didn't think that was too crazy. That Paul Craig has beat some absolute killers. He beat Jamal Hill, who was the uh, light heavyweight champion for a period there. So I thought it was a possibility. It was a pretty close-ish fight. Bo Nickel definitely got the win, but holy fuck, he got it in a boring way. And Bo Nickel came in with all this hype. But the last two or three fights, he just seems to be getting the crowd offside. Like, I think they were chanting something like, uh, this is so boring or something by the end of the fight or uh, something along those lines. But I think his next fight, if he's going to keep on this trajectory of like this new up and coming, the best thing we've ever seen, he needs to get a finish. He needs to get an aggressive knockout or just show us he's wrestling on the ground and get a submission. But um, yeah, we'll see what comes next for him. The co-main, holy fucking shit. We all knew this was going to be potentially the best fight on the card and it backed up. It was it was pretty insane. It. I thought Michael Chandler was going to do a better job, if we had to be honest. I thought there was going to be a chance for him winning, but Charles Oliveira just fought the perfect fight. Like It was probably one of the best performances I've seen since Conor McGregor versus Eddie Alvarez um, all those years ago, but everything that Michael Chandler did. And that might even be the thing. Maybe Michael Chandler did fight a good fight, but the things that Oliveira was doing just to um, like reverse everything he was doing just flowed so naturally and so calmly. Like there was no stress on Charles Oliveira's face. Like he knew exactly where the fight was going and uh, he dominated. He dominated the first four rounds. And then that last round, Michael Chandler came out and he's like, I need to fucking... I need to do something to win this. And Joe Rogan even said it after. He's like, that fifth round could be the best ever round I've ever seen in the UFC. Um, but fuck, he was he was going. I thought he had him a couple of times in that last round. And then Ol- Oliveira just got his back again. And he basically just hung on to him until the end of the fight. But go and watch the last 30 seconds of that fight and just see an exhausted Michael Chandler just put in that last ditch attempt and just like Oliveira's on his back and Chandler just stood up twice with him on his back and just fucking slammed down on the, on the canvas. Uh, insane shit to see, but a sick way to end a fight and still keep a little bit of that, uh, what's the word? Like, I, don't, I can't think of the word, but it... Michael Chandler didn't lose anything from that fight by showing how much guts he's got. Called out Conor McGregor again, which I don't know. I don't know if it's going to happen, but I wouldn't mind it. It seems to be two blokes that are, again, they're on the back end of their career. You would assume Michael Chandler would win. He's the more active of the two, but Conor McGregor, 
He's been written off his entire career. What's another write-off? And he just comes and proves us all wrong. I've said it time and time again. He's my favorite fighter I've ever seen in the octagon. Uh, so I would love to see it. Uh, main event. Like I said just before, we all we all knew this was going to happen. It went exactly, maybe not exactly how we thought. I thought John Jones was going to finish it earlier than he did. I think it was, I don't even remember the round. I think it was third or fourth. Um, but just a fucking backward spinning leg kick into Stipe's stomach just dropped him and then just finished him with ground and pound. Holy fuck. Uh, it has to be said that John Jones is the best fighter that we've ever seen in the cage. Uh, it is crazy just to see his fight IQ in there and just everything his opponent throws at him. Like we saw it yesterday, just time after time. Stipe would throw something. John Jones would like download that quickly in his head and go, okay, I've got an answer for that. And just come up with an idea to stop Stipe from doing what he did. Um, in saying that, it was the exact same deal as the Mike Tyson fight. Stipe was 42. It was just an old man in there. And I understand John Jones is 37 now. He's getting up there as well. But still, that's that's five years. Once you hit your 40s in the UFC, you're, you're pretty much done for. I – and I text Ash just after the fight. I genuinely feel Stipe did what I said about Mike Tyson and just – he had one last fight in him and he knew this was going to be a big payday. I think he, I think he got paid like 1.8 mil for this fight or something and – He's a fucking firefighter in New York. That's his day job. And it, I would assume he's going, okay, I can look after my wife and kids. If I go get punched in the head a couple more times, this is going to suck dick. But hey, I'll look up. This will set my family up for the rest of our lives. Um, so hats off to Stipe. The end of the fight, John jo- uh, jo- Joe Rogan goes, what's next? And Stipe basically said, I'm fucking done. Thank God that was my last fight. And You could tell, like, all fight week, he did not want to be there. He was dreading the whole thing. And as soon as he got in the cage, just that blank face, which I understand is a bit of a – it's always been Stipe, but there was just something about it yesterday that he did not want to fucking be there. So I'm glad that's over. Stipe still goes down as the best heavyweight that we've seen with all the records and shit he has. But, yeah, no denying John Jones is the best UFC fighter we've ever seen. A lot of people are – Same deal as Mike Tyson, like exactly the same as Mike Tyson's story. A lot of people are now like, oh, everything John Jones has done outside the cage, blah, blah, blah. Yes, I don't don't, uh, condone anything that he's done outside the cage, but inside the cage there is no denying that fucking this dude is the best we've ever seen. On the back end of that, after what we saw yesterday, I do believe... If the Tom Aspinall fight goes ahead with John Jones, John Jones is pushing crazy for Alex Pereira, and I feel like that's the better fight for John. If he does end up somehow getting tricked into fighting Tom Aspinall, I feel like Tom Aspinall might win that, and that would be a crazy thing to watch. Uh, but yeah, again, from what I saw yesterday, I think he just has all the answers to. John's little holes and he doesn't have many but I think he might get it done uh what do we got here all right motivational clip for the week let's rip into it I'll drag it across we've got the man himself Mr. Mac Miller this week I saw this pop up and it was just a good little light-hearted one to drop so smile at someone today make somebody happy you have more power than you think you do Enjoy your day, or night, or week. Rest in peace to that legend. He's fucking one of my favorite rappers, but apparently he's got a new album dropping soon, which I don't know. I don't always like it when families and producers and stuff release things after artists have passed away, but we'll see. I'll keep an an open mind for that when that does drop, but gigs for the week, uh, just have the one. Wednesday the 20th, I will be at the Mount Gravatt Hotel. I've never done that one before. It's a newish one that's popped up. So come check me out there if you're out and about. Otherwise, send submissions via DM to the Can't Get Any Worse podcast 
or send me an email at can't get any worse pod at gmail.com. Spread the podcast around again. Like I said, we're we're on that slow and steady incline again, which is it's good to see. It's fucking it's not much, but it's still a download or two extra a week. Um, which is fucking sick. Uh gives me that little boost, you know what I mean? But if I don't talk to you before next week, I will see you later. Okay.